Hello and welcome to September 2021 in A Year Gardening. Now, I've got a lot to go through in a shortened show today, but um, I'm finally getting the uh, top render on the stream. I've got all the materials now. And what I'm doing is I'm putting a 15mm cement-based uh, render. So it's actually a one-to-one -one mix of sand and cement. So you've got one part of cement to half a part of builder's sand and half a part of sharp sand and that is forming the uh, base on here and that is mixed with an animal friendly waterproofing agent once i have got the cement mixture dry then i'm also covering it with another waterproofing agent and a frost proofer so that it doesn't get affected by the cold weather I'll run you through some of the progress on this later in the show. We're also going to be moving a couple of things around in the garden today, and I'll show you the work that I ended up doing on the woodland border. Got a couple of new projects in line as well, which are going to be taking place over the autumn and the spring. I'll probably leave winter alone, but um, it's very, very exciting. So the first thing I will go and do is I'll show you the work that I've done on the woodland border. Well you may remember in the last show I started to do a bit of tidying in this boulder and I didn't realize how bad it was so we've got lots of grass growing through here the heathers need cutting down and a lot of the plants that I've been growing are actually dying underneath the growth of things like the peony and the fuchsia. So I've got to get in here and really, really tidy this. So what I thought was going to be about an hour's worth of work is probably a week's worth. But this is going to look absolutely beautiful when I've finished. Well, I've been working on this border and uh, we've got a nice edge coming along here. A little bit more work to do on there. Taken out a lot of the weeds from behind and the phlox is now appearing. And I'll just put this little um, baby corder line in here, which is going to grow maybe as big as that one, but it's going to grow behind so maybe eight or nine years behind so this will be lower and that'll be higher with the bud here growing over here and we've got the uh, potentilla and the forsythia and the lovely fuchsias coming through this is really building into a nice border but i've got to spend some more time just on keeping it clean and tidy my fault i've left it alone this year but now i've started work on here I'm going to really enjoy making this a really nice part of the garden. So we've got our flag irises that come through every year, but now from one plant, I've divided that. I've got four plants now, so we should get uh, better growth next year. Loads of aqualesia, and <laughs> over the back here, we have got just a wall of colour, shapes. Still some more aqualesias to cut down. I've got the uh, Procosmia coming over this side here and they're really coming through beautifully. And then of course, underneath all of this lot, we have got the Hellebores, which will give us that early welcome to spring. So this is a nice bit of the garden and I'm thoroughly enjoying working on it. And I do apologize again for not working on it during the year. I finally started to build the wall at the header of the stream and so what I've done is I've just mortared these few blocks together here but in the top I've made a couple of small indentations in the mortar by keeping the blocks apart and when that's dried out nicely I'm going to put some compost in there and grow some rather pleasant little plants in there so I think uh, that's a good start. We'll get the uh, flower pot in the end, get the cover on and get the uh, wall built on the other side tomorrow. 
Well, before I start work on the rendering that runs underneath the bridge, I thought now would be a really good time to give this some timber treatment so uh, none of the stain will spill onto the new render that goes in there. So I'm going to crack on with that and I'll show you what it looks like afterwards. Well, there we have some preservative on the uh, bridge and I'm just going to wait for that to dry and then crack on with the next bit of the render on the screen. Well, now I'm back at the head of the stream and I have a pot of Sempervirens, uh, sometimes called house leeks, sometimes called uh, hen and chicks. And every little plant here can give you a new plant. And I'm going to be putting these into the wall on the top of the stream head. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be making just a little hole in the compost then I'm going to take one of these little baby plants here just pull it off and feed that into the compost here this will grow to a new plant and I'm going to do another one on the other side here and these will spread and grow over the next couple of years. Let's just, let's just take one of these out of here. And we'll pop that down inside the wall here. You know what? We might even put a third one in there. Just right at the front here. Make a nice little hole. And we'll take another one of these plants out here. And pop that in at the front. And I'll do that in the other hole over the other side here as well. And these will spread and grow and they'll give us a nice cover over the top of the wall. Well, now I thought I'd talk to you about one or two of the changes that are going to be happening in the garden. And one of them is right here. This is where we had our herb garden which has moved and I'll show you what I've done with that and the reason I've moved that is we're going to be putting a little extended cover on the top of the uh, summer house bringing it out so that we can enjoy sitting outside in some of the more inclement weather. One of the other changes is we've moved the gazebo and I'll show you that shortly as well. But first let me show you what I've done with the herbs. Well, this is where I bought my herbs from the little deck area, which we're going to be covering. And I've built up a little stack of pallets, which I've cut down and made a tier here. And we've got our rosemary and our coriander and our parsley and our chives. And they all seem to be very happy here. But the great reason for bringing them here is they're right by the kitchen door. And so if we need some herbs when we're cooking, we can just come straight out of the door and pick the herbs nice and freshly. Now the next thing I want to show you is what we've done with the gazebo that was down on the lawn. Well now the gazebo has moved off of the lawn. What was happening is all of the grass was dying underneath where the gazebo was. So we've taken that now and put it up onto the patio, which is our general entertaining area. And so we've got a large area now where we'll have the barbecues, we'll have the gazebo, and we'll have tables and chairs where we entertain our friends and family. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to enlarge the border where the gazebo was. So let me show you that now. Well, this is the area where we did have the gazebo, and as you can see, the grass is very, very damaged. And rather than repair, replace the grass, I'm going to enlarge the borders here 
and join them together but I'm going to put a couple of chairs back into this area so that we can sit down enjoy the stream and enjoy the flowers from sitting surrounded by plants so that's uh, a little job for next spring and uh, I may well start over the next month or so to dig this new border out and think about the planting for that so uh, quite a lot to get done in this area also whilst I'm talking about digging the rose garden far too many plants coming through in there now so I'm going to thin that out take out some of the self-seeding plants and move some of the geraniums and a couple of those geraniums will probably end up in this border here and I'm going to be uh, ordering now a lot of my spring and early summer bulbs and I'm going to be under planting the rhododendron with a fair nice mix I think I'll probably get some alliums and some crocuses maybe some dwarf daffodils this sort of thing just to give us a nice bit of colour and I'm thinking of putting some snowdrops around the edge as well now if you're going to be um, growing snowdrops the best thing to do is to buy those in the green um, so you get a little pot at the garden centre with the green growth on them um, you can plant them uh, as a, a dried uh, bulb but they're going to take a very very long time to come to flower and so I'm just going to get some at the garden centre next spring and plant those in the green in the ground and then we'll be able to enjoy flowers on those for the coming years so that's a general plan for uh, what we're going to be doing down here well this is the section of garden that we have filled with beautiful flowers like these oh, cosmos and what a lovely scent they have but this area of the garden looked very different and last year Julie was taking some photographs of me while I was doing some filming and I thought one of the photographs she took I can show you the comparison to where we are now and the amount of grass that we've lost and the increased borders with flowers for our bees and our pollinators it's going to make such a great difference to this garden Well, that brings me to the end of this month's little visit to my garden. Suffice to say, now is the time to start planning your spring bulbs and your autumn clean-up of your beds and preparing for the darker evenings, which are already coming now. And whilst August has not been the most amazing month, that we've ever had we have had the odd days of sunshine and some brightness but has been a bit of a letdown and it's nice to see that my uh, flowers are still performing very very well um, considering I wouldn't have expected things like the delphinium and the hibiscus and things still to be in flower as they are at this time of year and hopefully they're going to carry on for a few weeks longer now today I've just shown you a little bit of work on the stream here and some of the work on the woodland border and explained the uh, plans for extending the woodland border to join in with the top border and I think the theme will carry on very very well. As the uh, fence behind there is roughly southeast facing I may well plant a couple of grapevines in there and uh, grow those up behind the border and we'll have to see how that goes I have actually placed an order now for next year's bulbs and uh, so uh, I have ordered some alliums and some crocuses and uh, hopefully we'll be putting those in over the next four to six weeks so that's it for today's show
and uh, I'd like to thank you once again for joining me and being with us and do remember if you want to keep in touch just hit that subscribe button on YouTube your uh, journey with me will be greatly appreciated well it just leaves me to say thank you very much enjoy what is left of the summer and prepare for autumn and winter as they come and make sure that your gardens are prepared as well and we'll have another couple of shows still to come this year i'm sure but that just leaves me to grab a little glass and uh, this time i've got a rather splendid little pinot grigio to share with you today so stay safe stay well be kind to each other happy gardening and cheers <laughs>